Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the SHIFT webinar series for students and recent graduates. Um, my name is Kristen Gribb, and I work as an alumni engagement officer within the College of Arts and Science. As we gather here today, we acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. The SHIFT webinar series was created to help prepare our undergraduate students, graduate students, and recent graduates for life after graduation. The online sessions feature alumni speakers and presentations focused on how to prepare you to become the leaders the world needs after graduation. This year, we have hosted four sessions over the past uh, two months. Before we jump into the event, I'd first like to go over a couple housekeeping items. If you would like to see a live transcript of this event, please click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen. Show subtitles will show your subtitles at the bottom and your at the bottom of your screen and the view full transcript will show you a sidebar of the full transcript. Everyone's microphone will be disabled during the webinar. If you'd like to ask a question, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Enter your question into the text box and click send. All the questions will be answered at the end. We'll now dive into the actual event. The College of Arts and Science has over 53,000 alumni alone. Alumni who have graduated from the College of Arts and Science have paved the road, paved the way for your success and set a high standard to which you can aspire to. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce to you four alumni who have taken time out of their busy schedules to be with us here today. The first alum that I would like to introduce to you is Andy Ewan. Andy is a USAS graduate who obtained two degrees from the University of Saskatchewan. He obtained an economics degree from the College of Arts and Science in 2005, as well as a civil engineering degree from the College of Engineering in 2005. In 2014, Andy took a break from engineering and opened the Odd Couple restaurant in Saskatoon's Riversdale neighborhood, which he currently operates with his family. In 2020, Andy took two project management courses through the Edwards School of Business at USASC and passed the project management professional PMP exam. Andy recently started practicing as an engineer again, working as a mining project manager on a part-time basis. He is still involved at Odd Couple in a business strategy and menu development role. Ashton George is up next. Ashton is an award-winning travel writer, photographer, and content creator behind the Lost Girls Guide to Finding the World. Ashton graduated from USASC with an English degree from the College of Arts and Science in 20, 2009 and a Bachelor of Education degree from the College of Education, which she obtained in 2010. Ashton is the go-to travel expert in Saskatchewan, but is no stranger to trips abroad. Ashton has traveled solo through more than 60 countries and all seven continents. When not on the road, you can find her working with some of the world's most well-known brands. Next up, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Jonathan Thomas. Dr. Jonathan Thomas graduated from USASC, first completing his degree in physiology and pharmacology from the College of Arts and Science in 2012, before completing his degree in medicine in 2016. He currently resides in Saskatoon with his wife and two sons. Jonathan currently works as a family physician who has been working on the front lines of healthcare throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and recently published his first novel, The Flight Network. Lastly, I'd like to introduce you Carmen Ham. Carmen completed her undergraduate degree in international studies in the College of Arts and Science in 2011 and a master's degree in political studies through the College of Arts and Science in 2014. Carmen and her husband, Brad, found a taste hospitality group in 2015 with a passion for hospitality and a love for good food and drink. Taste portfolio includes Una Pizza and Wine with a second location coming later this year, Picaro Cocktails and Tacos, Cohen's Beer Republic and the Cure Artisanal Charcuterie, as well as a growing catering de department. The mission of Taste Hosp Hospitality is to establish a dynamic range of food and beverage institutions with a focus on excellence, integrity, fun, local, sustainability, servanthood, collaboration, and passion. I want to thank all four of you for being with us here today. We'll now get into the panel questions. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we can get the panels to answer them at the very end. We'll first start up with Andy. Andy, in what ways has your journey from grade 12 graduation until now been nonlinear? Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so I think um, for me, there was a lot of trial and error since I was in grade 12, grade, grade 12 to now. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, when I was in high school, I thought I was either gonna be a dentist or um, I was gonna go into be a lab technician. So I actually um, somehow got a volunteer uh, position at the Agriculture and Food Canada 
um, as a lab technician and realized that, you know what, it's not for me. I was testing a lot of DNAs, but with uh, wheat and I, I find it, um, I want more interaction with people. So um, not sure what I wanted to, um, to do. So I enrolled, I was enrolled into arts and science. I was uh, interested in economics. Um, I also really like math. So I also went into, um, I got accepted into College of Engineering. Um, I like buildings. So I went into civil. Um, and um, after that, it was more like um, I was the only child and I, I need to find a job, really. So I ended up, uh, uh, was able to find a job in Saskatoon and practice as an engineer um, for about eight, nine years. But along the way, I, I really like cooking. I was, um, I grew up in a, a restaurant that, uh, I, I grew up in a restaurant family. My uncle had restaurants, my parents had restaurants. So I thought um, perhaps I could do it differently than what they did. Um, uh, I thought about going to chef school and never materialized. And, um, but in, in 2014, um, I was practicing in the mining sector and specific, uh, specifically in uranium and uranium prices at the time was really uh, low and my clients didn't really have much work. And so I thought uh, that might be an opportunity for me to uh, think about going into the food business a bit more, uh, think about a concept. So I started The Odd Couple. And um, so actually last Friday was eight years of uh, <clears throat> Uh, eighth year anniversary for us and um, but then like like uh, Christian said I I also am practicing engineering now um, to me it's all about I think my journey is about uh, learning about things that I am interested in uh, it, when I get stuck to a point where I don't I feel like I'm not learning anymore then I would um, find other opportunities to keep learning and something that I'm interested in I think that's uh that's what non-linear non about it. It's, it's not like I went to economics and I became an a, economist. Um, I don't, and I think in, in, in this day and age, it's, it's, there's no such thing anyways. I think you go in with, uh, you feel like you wanted to practice something, but it will be like the, uh, that would become your, your basis into getting onto some, some other areas that you didn't even know that you would get explored to. Wonderful. Um, congratulations on eight years. That's amazing. Um, oh, Herman, how about you? In what ways has your journey from grade 12 until now been nonlinear? I think like many others uh, probably that are participating, I finished high school with a direct line on what I wanted to be when I grew up. I think my, my passions and my skill set really make a variety of different fields appealing, which is almost worse having a broad spectrum of possibilities rather than having kind of a definitive um, path to take on what I should pursue for a career. Um, I didn't start university until I was 23. Before that, I'd kind of fallen into a bunch of different jobs that I'd been exposed to kind of from um, where my parents were working. And so that was kind of the path that I had taken. Um, so in 20, when I was 23, I uh, upgraded my high school math because I was hoping to get into commerce and I started taking while I'm still working full-time in another job I started taking a my first class was a night class an English class um, which I immediately loved and was sitting beside somebody who was in international studies and he was describing the program and I thought that sounds like exactly what I want to do um, business isn't going to open up these doors and allow me to kind of um, fuel the, the, that kind of component of what I'm really passionate about. So um, that was kind of what started me in international studies, which I think is a pretty, it's, it's interdisciplinary, which is really exciting to me, but also I think a pretty small college that doesn't get a lot of um, representation, but for a lot of people, it really, having that exposure to so many different components, sociology and history and um, anthropology and politics, I think it really allowed me to kind of determine what I was excited about and what I wasn't excited about. And so that kind of like led me through um, that kind of, as I was narrowing down kind of the area that I wanted to specialize in. Um, when I was finishing my undergrad, I was looking at job opportunities and everything that I read so that I needed to get my master's. So I rolled right into that the following semester. And then as I was finishing my master's, everything was saying, well, you need two years of volunteer experience. and 
at that point I was married and I had stepkids and there was just no way that I was going to be able to volunteer somewhere for two years. So Brad and I, my husband and I were talking about kind of what we wanted to do as far as um, we wanted to work together. We knew we worked really well together and we wanted to be a part of something that was growing and exciting. And we knew we wanted to work with um, a large team of people. And so as we ruled out a bunch of different possibilities uh, based on those criteria, then we just kept coming back to hospitality that it's weird to say that going to restaurants is a hobby, um, but that was something that we really enjoyed and definitely a priority when we were traveling and something that we did a lot when we were home. And so we thought, how can we, how can we kind of enter into this exciting food scene that people like Andy had kind of really seen um, independent restaurants sort of leveling up and um, being able to compete with the chains that were offered in Saskatoon. So that was something that we just felt like this is, this is the road that we want to take. And from there, the rest is history. That's awesome. Yeah, Saskatoon has some great restaurants. Um, John, what about you? Um, while you were a student, did you have any opportunities to explore multiple possible professions through experiential learning, internships, volunteer, or summer employment as a student? Well, I just want to say thanks for having me firstly, but uh, I will just preface this by saying all my other uh, alumni with me here today have gone on to do really great things outside their degrees and I personally for me I haven't given up my day job I'm still doing what exactly I'd gone to school for but uh, I did start pursuing some other passions and uh, that's quite recently during the COVID pandemic so uh, publishing a, my first novel during it and uh, just on my way to publish a second one right away so uh, that being said going back uh, to your question um, I think for myself like even growing up I, uh, I always had a direct path I knew I liked science I was the nerd in doctor's offices growing up studying the anatomy charts and just trying to memorize exactly what structures were and how things worked so I, I had definitely had a sense of like under, loving to understand how anatomy works and physio physiology, but uh, going into university, um, I think, you know, going from high school to university, it was quite a big jump. And for a lot of students, uh, it's quite jarring where you do have to become way more independent and having to learn what works for you for learning and what doesn't. So it was a it was a shock for me. And even though in my mind, I really wanted to go down the line of medicine, I didn't always think that was going to be possible. Um, you know, it's, it's quite competitive and, you know, every class matters. And, um, you know, uh, I did apply the first time in third year undergrad and I, I ended up uh, failing uh, the interview. So I, I had that opportunity to grow from it and learn from that failure and uh, really just see whether that was the right fit for me. Um, so I did explore some other opportunities. I, I took a a volunteer internship in Nicaragua that summer just working as like a health aide and um, you know we were in this small town that didn't speak any English so my Spanish uh, class uh, really came in handy uh, in university uh, so I you know explored options there I really enjoyed what I was doing and when I came back for the fourth year uh, you know I hit the ground running and head in the books and uh, I think you know you have to do more than just book learning out in university. So that was definitely a, a good way for me to learn, just having that failure and moving, learning to move in the right direction from that. Awesome. I agree. There's lots of different um, opportunities to get involved on campus other than just kind of academic wise. Um, Ashlyn, would you characterize your journey from high school through university and beyond as following your passion and why or why not? Hey everyone, uh, so thanks for having me today. Um, really fun to be able to talk with you all. So for me, in hindsight, yes, but in those moments, I didn't know it at the time. Um, I've always been a jack of all trades kind of person. I've loved doing so many different things. So it was hard for me to decide what I wanted to do for a career. In in high school, I, I did want to be a doctor and I got into university and, you know, I was taking all the classes to, to write the MCAT and I just didn't know if that was right for me. It was like a big commitment and I had a lot of other interests. So I remember, especially in my third year, I was I was actually 50% split with English classes, 50% split with like biology, chemistry classes. And I had to decide, you know, 
English or biology degree. I didn't want to take the math class to get the bio degree. And I was like, I can read some books and write some essays. Um, so that's kind of how I fell into my English degree. But that was also my interest and my passion. I've been, you know, reading like crazy since I was a little kid. I always loved to write, but I had never actually considered it as an actual career to become a writer. Um, and even so after I finished university, uh, what I decided was I, I kind of created this philosophy that if I could spend five years learning in university, I could spend five years learning in the world. So I designed a five-year travel plan. I would travel for six months of the year and then come back and work for six months of the year. And for me, combining those two things was really amazing because I got to realize how important um, different ways of learning are and it allowed me to pursue passions in different ways as well. So I took a lot of time when I was traveling to kind of try a ton of diff different things, see what I was really passionate about, discover that the biology connection, the English connection, really love the outdoors, um, really love to write. That's when I launched my blog. And when I started writing, it was just for fun. It was a passion project. I never thought it would turn into a career. I'm really excited and grateful that it has. And even in those moments, that's, that's the whole reason behind the name, The Lost Girl's Guide to Finding the World, is because even with, you know, two degrees and time spent traveling the world, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So kind of a long answer, but um, I think for me, the important thing was having the time and space, both through traditional education and travel to figure out what I love to do and then taking the steps to follow that. So I did end up following my passion, but I didn't see it while I was doing it. Sometimes it's, it's hard to recognize that in the moment. No, for sure. Thank you for that. Um, Carmen, in what ways did your time at the College of Arts and Science support your discovery for what brings you joy, what brings you value, and what you're passionate about? I think part of education is learning what doesn't work for you as well. Um, and that was one thing that was um, interesting to see um, through political studies. There's a lot of different avenues that you could take. And um, one thing that I learned is I have no interest in bureaucracy or the political realm. I want to be a part of changing the world. There's no question. Um, but public policy for me isn't the way that I wanted to go about doing that. Um, I think working on my master's thesis as well really demonstrated to me that I need to work within a team. I found that the process of researching um, was really fulfilling and I really enjoyed that component. But the writing and the flushing out of the work was really became excruciating for me to be alone in front of a computer all day every day so i really knew that was that wasn't a, a way that i could um explore my career trajectory i needed to to be working with other people um i think one thing that is is interesting to reflect on is kind of the common themes throughout this path that kind of led us to where we are today um definitely hospitality has been something that we've always been passionate about and interested in um and working with others um, in a team, I think, in it, particularly in a leadership component, has been something that's always sort of just manifested in my life throughout the different roles that I've had. Um, creativity as well. When I was going to go into commerce, I was planning on doing a marketing degree, uh, not necessarily because I wanted to work in advertising, but because I really just love brainstorming and seeing an idea, seeing an idea come from kind of the conceptual phase into completion and execution. Um, that process is something that has always really been exciting to me. Um, I think understanding that learning is something that is always important. Um, it's funny, when when I'm with my kids driving down College Drive every fall, I look at the university and think, oh, I wish I was going to school there. And they think I'm crazy for that, but I, I just love being a part of that environment and surrounded by people that are learning. And especially now, I mean, as our world is changing, um, I, I remember when, um, Donald Trump was elected. We were on a family vacation visiting one of our kids who had moved to New Zealand. And as the process was happening, I just kept thinking, I just want to be in school right now to sit with a group of people to discuss what, how, what happened and what's going to happen. And just that kind of um, flushing through ideas and, and kind of working things out, but also having professors that have the experience to kind of guide that that conversation um, and and now to understand how much learning is important to me and that you know taking wine classes and it looks different learning about leadership or the hospitality industry or you know uh, even just kind of like um, 
self-help isn't the right word, but you know, that kind of reading and um, that's an important component of my day every day. And I understand that that's what's gonna kind of drive me forward and, and reveal new passions and interests in the future. Um, and then I think um, helping those in need has, has always been um, from when I was in high school, my first trip to Ethiopia, I was, uh, I think 12 or 13 um, with my family and, you know, five subsequent trips after that, I think understanding um, how important that component is to what I do. So that was a, a part definitely of me choosing to pursue my educational path, but is such an important part of what we're doing with our company now and our future endeavors as we look to grow that component of, of our company. Um, and we know that that not only resonates with us and is what kind of makes our hearts beat faster, but also our team that works with us understands how important that is to us and, and that's something that they value as well. So I think really to sum it all up, I think by looking at kind of how I spend my time and how I spend my money and what I choose to give my attention to really reveal kind of what resonates with me and those themes kind of remained an undercurrent throughout the 20 plus years since I graduated high school through education and through through work and um, passions and hobbies that I have now. Awesome. John, what about you? In what ways did your time at the college um, support your discovery of what brings you joy, what brings you value, and what you're passionate about? Well, I think, you know, with being in arts and science, it's such a huge college. So it's nice having like the variety to take a number of different classes to find out what you're interested in and what you aren't interested in. Uh, so I found that, you know, for my first couple of years, there was, it was just such a broad, uh, like the subjects were so broad that I, I didn't find myself necessarily enjoying certain things like my organic chemistry class, but uh, you move on up and uh, I started really just honing in on like the details. So like the physiology and pharmacology of things that really captured my attention. So I just found that, uh, you know, you got to kind of do trial and error to see what you'll like. And some people finish their degree and might not necessarily like what they went with and pursue other options. So I think it's important to know that just because you're you know, doing a degree in something doesn't mean you'll be stuck doing that same thing for the rest of your life. And uh, it's nice knowing that there's a lot of other things out there. So um, for me, I mean, uh, I love what I do. I, I, I'm always learning even now with my job. Uh, but I will say that, you know, after I'm done work, the last thing I want to do is continue doing medical reading. So it's fun continuing to grow doing other stuff I, I do enjoy learning outside of medicine and uh, you know and maybe it's just showing my my age or being a dad but uh, you know going into World War II history or Cold War history I'll, I'll go down these rabbit holes of learning about you know different subjects that that I never learned in in school and you know there's so many outlets now to to learn from other places so I, I just never like to be stuck in a routine or being you know in in one area that that you'll feel like you'll do for the rest of your life I like exploring other options and and growing and um, and that's how I find myself just uh, even writing now uh, writing a book uh, really places me out of my comfort zone and really makes me reflect about a lot of things about my own life and uh, it's been fun putting out stories and even outside of that like uh, you know going to the bookstore and picking up to like tons of books from all sorts of genres I think there's something to be learned from any any story so it's it's nice just seeing different perspectives and learning from other people's points of views. So, and of course, arts and science is just filled with so many different people and personalities. So it's just kind of nice having that huge, you know, variety diversity in the college there. For sure. Um, Ashlyn, um, in what ways has your education prepared you to be flexible, adapt flexible, adaptable and enduring skills that support your ongoing professional development? So for me, I think the time that I was able to take in university to learn and to grow um, and to start to really understand who I was as a person was really important. And throughout university, I really discovered how learning happens in a variety of ways. It's not always sitting in that class, right? It's it's being part of university clubs. I, you know, I sat on the 
the you know, or the College of Education um, Student Council and um, joined a ton of different clubs. You could meet a bunch of different people, and there was just learning surrounding the whole university experience for me. And obviously, that extends itself into travel as well. And you know, I don't think I would have been ready to travel in the way that I did right out of high school. I needed more time to develop personally, to have the confidence and the knowledge and the ability to go do that, to go strike out on my own. So that was really, really important. Even the confidence you get from completing a four-year program and then I tacked on my education degree as well. But you know, that that really lets you know, like, hey, I worked really hard towards this. I am capable and you grow a lot of confidence for that. And for me, um, I've always had, you know, all those different interests and always push myself to step outside my comfort zone. And that's that's in everything I do, even in my job today, you know, I I always joke that um, in university, one of the things that prepared me the most for real life was the week when all your midterms or all your finals fell in the same three days. And you're like, how am I going to get through all of this? And <laughs> I always think about that now because that's the reality in my world is, you know, it might be quiet for a week and then you get slammed for a week or two with work. And I always just think back to those moments when I was staying up late studying and how I managed that and how I've been able to use those tools and skills skills today in my job even this past weekend being on the road for work it's been pretty stressful um so yeah it was such a great foundation and basis for me to build out from to be you know adaptable and flexible and I always say I'm 50 percent planned and 50 cent 50 percent fly by the seat of my pants because you can't control everything and you got to take it as it comes so it was definitely a great foundation for me awesome and Andy, last, lastly, um, in what ways has your education prepared you to be flexible, adaptable, and enduring skills that support your ongoing professional development? I think um, for me, I, I, I think of the times when, when we take um, electives and some of the electives I love, I, lo I really enjoy those classes. Some of them I, I don't enjoy it as much but then you soon need to get through it and I feel like that's just life like and I always I used to run a lot of <clears throat> half marathons and I feel like I compare that to sometimes you go through tough times in life um but you got no choice but 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 to go through it because you're not going to run halfway through and then run back run back to the starting points um it's just life in general there's going to be up and downs but I feel like those are the lessons that you can self learn about how do you uh what can triggers you to get through some of these deadlines some of these uh uh classes that you don't necessarily uh enjoy as much as some other ones and yet you can uh find a way to pass it through and then learn from this particular situations those are the things that i still um think of even today you know sometimes you you run into the project where um, it's difficult. How do you get through these times? How, what makes you uh, stride as a person? Uh, and, and how do you get through those tough times? Uh, I feel like when I think back uh, my, my uh, U of S um, studying time, I really cherish the time that I get to learn not only from the professors, but also from the classmates that I had, uh, learn from each other. Um, how do you get through something together? How do you make friends? How do you develop relationships? Those are the things that I think those are uh, make it real, make it um, make those connections that you never know. Uh, honestly, uh, 20 years later, it might be become uh, someone that you met 20 years ago may become your colleagues that you're going to be working with and or they become your clients or they become some of your best friends those are the things that i think it helps me um to become um um those are the skill set that i i feel like uh my my college of arts and science days uh really still benefit me today uh those are the things i would think of wonderful yeah i think the last few years have really challenged each and every one of us to kind of figure out all of that stuff within the last two years um, so we do have some questions. So attendees, if you do have any more questions, please put them in the Q&A. Um, if the panelists, do you guys have anything else that you would like to throw out there before we go through the questions? If so, here's your opportunity. 
Okay. If not, okay, we'll go through the questions. And if you don't know the answer, that's okay. We'll just go through them. Um, so the first question is, let me just get to these questions here. So the first question is for Carmen. So how is your international studies degree able to help you in the hospitality industry? I think that's interesting. Since the question was posed, I've been thinking about that. Um, I think that the thing that we learn as we go through our degrees is not the specificity of, of what we actually were studying, kind of like what Ashlyn talked about. You know, if you, if you can prove that you can go through that kind of ringer of what is required to complete a degree, I think you've really proven a lot to yourself and to employers or, um, you know, colleagues in the future that you're able to work hard, I think, um, and to, you know, manage, manage your time and uh, that you have language skills and, you know, all the things that we kind of have to demonstrate in order to, to run the gamut of being able to finish these degrees. Um, when I finished my, or when I was finishing my master's, uh, I was talking to some professors in the political studies department and I said, you know, I'd really love to teach. Um, I feel like I have a unique vantage point. I, I wrote my master's thesis on um, the Tunisian revolution um, as a part of the Arab Spring and that wasn't really represented um, in the college at that time. And I really felt like I would love to share what I've learned. And one of the professors said, you know, what you're proving by finishing your master's isn't that you know everything about a particular subject, you're proving that you kind of understand um, and learn and can have dialogue and, and kind of take in that information. And um, that was really eye opening to me of like, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't know any, everything about this subject and, and I need to, um, it's about kind of the broader picture of that. And um, so that was kind of a part of it is understanding maybe more about myself than actually international studies specifically. But I think to, to know what you don't know, um, one thing that's interesting in our um, application process in the restaurants, we have a form that everybody has to fill out when they apply with us. And one of the questions is for, for people to rate themselves on their beer, wine, cocktail spirit knowledge. And anybody who rates themselves over a five, we know that they're lying. Like it's just, there's just no way that the world, those worlds are so huge. And, you know, I've got a couple of courses under my belt and I don't think I'd give myself more than a three, even that feels generous. You know, I, I think it's, that's the understanding that we have as we come through these degrees is there's just so much that we don't know. And that's really what I think international studies has taught me is um, not to make assumptions and to understand my, my privilege and my vantage point that I'm coming at for these, for every circumstance that I'm approaching and being able to kind of see there's a, there's a bigger picture and there's so much more that I don't understand out there that I need to be mindful of. I don't think that answered the question. <laughs> No, that, that was a good answer. That was a good answer. It's hard. I feel like with a lot of degrees and if you go on to do something different, it's like, you're right. It's not necessarily the academic work that you're learning that will help you in the hospitality. It's everything else that you gained through your experience kind of with your education. Um, there's a question for Andy and you may not know the answer to this, but that's okay. Um, how are you able to get both an engineering degree and an economics degree at the same time? I can help you out if you don't know, <laughs> but you go for it. Um, the honest truth was I was, I took a lot of electives in economics, basically as much as I could um, in, in, in engineering. Um, and then I took a summer dedicated to take most of my economics classes. So I was able to finish both in about five and a half years. But I think in general, it was just something that I was interested in. Um, so it wasn't um, like from a, from a challenge point of view, it was more like, how do you balance a schedule? Um, in, in engineering, there's like, in, in civil engineering, the, the, at the time that I took, there was usually six classes and five labs. And, so you just have to pace yourself and see how you could fit in the schedule. And I think if you like your the topics enough, then I think for me, it was more like I'm, I was genu genuinely interested in, in economics, but I was I, I got too deep onto engineering and God forbid, I never got kicked out. So I just um, 
I kept going because I there's there was a for me at the time when I was taking engineering was more like a self challenge. I didn't want to get. I I felt like I could do it more than I actually um, really even know what I was getting into. It was more like people said it was hard. I was good at math. I wanted to try it out. Um, economics was something that. I was always interested in. So I was, is, is, um, when you're doing an undergrad, it's mostly like a more theoretical, uh, theory based um, kind of study. So for me, it was like, okay, well, just learn something that I wanted to. So it wasn't as much of a challenge. Um, um, it was more like a time schedule, uh, uh, balance my schedule kind of kind of a challenge at the time but I think you know you could totally do like I guess most of us here have a, a couple of degrees now so you can definitely do it it just might take you longer to graduate and get out of the real world so that's that's all it is you want to spend more time at campus you know and I I, I agree with what common said earlier like I drove by like I still took classes through uh, 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 Edward School of Business um, because it was it was a more um, smaller time frame commitment, um, but I enjoy I enjoy learning together. I enjoy um, sharing ideas with people that uh, have similar interests in a particular topic. So those are the things that I I really cherish, and that's why even now every now and then, if I could, I would still take more classes through University of Saskatchewan. I, I love the campus actually, so. Awesome, thank you. One of our attendees said, just a comment, my reasons for going through engineering sound similar to Andy. People said it was hard and I just wanted to prove that I could do it. Luckily it worked out for me at the end. Um, yeah. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A now and we can wait just a minute to see if any pop up. I think that is a great, you guys kind of highlighted though, the great thing about um, arts and science is that, you know, lots of people do, lots of our students do come out with say a biology degree, but they can minor in say history or um, history or English or anything else. So it's just so diverse um, with people and um, areas of study. Nothing else is coming up in the chat. I don't think, oh, we have one. Oh, one other attendee. So what kind of work did you do when you did your six months of working Ashlyn? Um, so I always came back to Saskatchewan and I had a job with the city of Saskatoon just operating equipment. So I would drive tractors and mowers and very much connected to kind of growing up on the farm for me. So it paid really well. I had the career for nine years through university through traveling. So it was able to allow me to pay off my student loans and travel at the same time. Awesome. Any other questions? I'll give it about a minute just to see. Okay, I don't see any others popping up. So I guess, do any of the panelists have anything else that they would like to share? Anything? If not, we'll keep going. I know you guys have lots of busy, exciting lives and the attendees have places to go since most are attending over lunch hour. So um, thank you to all of our panelists for the great discussion and for taking time out of your guys' busy schedules to be part of our SHIFT webinar series. Um, thank you for all of our attendees for attending our third webinar. On Monday, June 14th, we'll be hosting our final webinar and it's a LinkedIn masterclass. So make sure to sign up ahead. Every student in attendance today will get, who attends three out of our four sessions, will receive a co-curricular um, credit on the record. And then if you guys have any questions or feedback, please email us at alumni.artsandscience at usas.ca. I do see a lot more questions coming in. So before we say goodbye, um, I'm just gonna look through this. John, um, we do have a question if your book was related to medicine. So can you say what your book was about during COVID? Yeah, um, well, initially a lot of the writings from the start were just kind of my own opinions on different pieces throughout that first year of COVID. Um, I think there was definitely a lot going on and everybody was tuning into TV to, you know, see what was happening around the world. Uh, my book's premise is 
related to COVID-19. Um, probably not what most people want to think about, but it is based in like a dystopian future 50 years from now. So still, you know, the world's still struggling with COVID-19, but instead of that being the variant, it's new variants that are more lethal and deadly. And so it's kind of based through a lens of my future grandson and how he sees the world and how things have shifted with, you know, being you know, part of an essential family versus non-essential and what type of, you know, privileges uh, and status can get you with safety going out into the real world. And, uh, and it's not only really based on just COVID itself, it's actually just incorporates a lot of other pieces throughout that first year, like, you know, going through a uh, police brutality in the news, hearing what was going on in the States and, uh, you know, long-term care facilities and how they were impacted from COVID. So uh, it's, it's all fiction, but uh, it's told in a, in a fun way. And I think that uh, if you read it, you'll kind of see it's a little bit of a summary of what we all went through in that first year of COVID. And, uh, and it's a very action-packed, fun way to read a book uh, you won't be able to put it back down once you start so perfect it sounds interesting i know my husband and i have a copy so we need to read it mm. <laughs> um there was another question um did any of our panelists take a break for a summer or a semester or two during their studies at usask or did everyone kind of just go straight through ashlyn you did no okay so yeah, everyone I didn't take a break really. Um, I actually loved doing summer courses. I loved the campus in the summer. Um, and I really liked the concentration of kind of being able to focus on one subject rather than four or five. But I did have um, kind of just through circumstances after I had done my, I think I, I probably was about a year into it, but I had taken just half time courses as I was still working full time um, that I ended up traveling Europe for a summer and did two uh, online courses, which wasn't, I mean, there was not nearly the offerings online then that was 2008 as there is now, but um, I was, I was doing a history class um, and I was doing a, an English class um, studying classics. And so I did those while I was traveling through Europe, which was incredible because I was watching it kind of in real life, in real time as I was studying. So the textbooks made my suitcases pretty heavy, but Otherwise, it was a really incredible experience to be able to do that. But I didn't take any other time off. Awesome. Um, the last question, um, which is more, they can email us and I can get you more information on that. It says, do we have to keep registering in courses in order to keep our student status to come back after we take a break? So I think there is a certain amount of time that you can take a break. But other than that, if you have any questions further to like the admissions process. If you want to email alumni.artsandscience at usas.ca, I can always get you in contact with the admissions officer within the college. Um, other than that, I don't see any other questions. Oh, one sec, I always. Um, last question. Um, did you guys do any exchange or internship slash residency outside of Saskatoon? I think some of you did. So if you did, do you want, would you like to speak on that? And if you didn't, then we can just move forward. Okay, they all, they did not then. Okay, well, I think that's all for the questions. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can email us. Again, thank you to all of our panelists for taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, we've learned a lot today about kind of where an arts and science degree can go and the vast array of options um, that you guys can, that you guys have once you graduate. Um, if you have any questions, please email me. Other than that, we hope to see you at our final webinar on June 14th. Have a wonderful afternoon and take care.